Carlton football is back. And with that, Carlton analysis is back. Carlton went down to Geelong by 17 points in a match sim, yet there were plenty of good extractions to take away from the game. Got through unscathed. Some good feedback around our contest and how we move the ball. And yeah, they always tested Geelong defensively. So we had a look at a couple of different structures of, uh, around personnel and, and team-wise. So yeah, we got what we wanted. For the searing heat and gusty winds, fundamentals was always never going to be easy on the eye. And that's okay because as Ed Kerno said bluntly, it's pre -season. but whilst it is pre-season and it helps us trial some new things, probably never to be seen again, it also gives us a glimpse of what there is to come. And like it or not, Jacob Wiedering will not be available for the first couple of weeks of the season, which in my eyes is a very important time of the year. And I have my reservations about what a Carlton team without a defensive anchor like him will look like. Aaron Hamill was pretty bullish about what a Carlton backline would look like without Weeders. He's such a dominant force for us there, but it gives others opportunity. Again, they're still working on, on their chemistry, both Lewis and Kempi and, and Gov. Bit to go to work on. Others have to step up now without, without Jacob there. And then this is what he had to say about the five goals we conceded in the first quarter in quick succession. You know, we weren't able to absorb their pressure and they, and they scored off our turnover, so, so that wasn't ideal for us. So that gave us some feedback around their pressure and, and, and their contest work, which they've been great at it for a decade. You know, you're not, you're not going to be able to get through all the time every time, so we've just got to be able to have put, put more composure into the game. What Aaron Hamill is alluding to was on full display. Yes, chemistry needs to be built, and equally there was emphasis on constant pressure, and turnovers or needing to have a lack thereof. I do feel as if these problems are more inflicted from the Jacob Wiedering injury than others may think. The Blues were number one for intercept marks and were number one for their rebound 50 rate in 2023. And their scores per inside 50 were down sitting in the 12th position. Jacob Wiedering amongst defenders sat in the top five for marks, contested marks, intercept marks, and kicks. This perfectly aligns with Carlton's ability to rebound out the back 50 for the high volume Weeders was doing this at last season. And getting an intercept mark and getting those kicks in is all at the beginning of a methodical approach as you build out the back line to go forward. If you have possession, obviously the opposition doesn't and missing Weeders means there is obviously a higher chance of turnover if of course the umpire is called play on as opposed to calling a mark as you would probably see a lot of the time with Wheaters. If we compare Wheaters to Lewis Young, the defensive loss percentage holds a ridiculous disparity, despite Wheaters facing more of them. Young is more of a spoiler to compensate for the three less marks and two less intercept marks he takes, and Wheaters has more rebound 50s as he has a higher kick to handball ratio, whilst Lewis Young is more of a serial handballer. Even still, Young has more clangers. The trend you're noticing is, the backbone of the defense isn't as definable because Lewis Young doesn't adopt that sort of identity. Wheaters allows clear structure for his sturdiness and nature of barely being beaten. You're much more inclined to feel at home where you've got a leader, a vocal presence that you know hangs his hat on these sort of things. You feel like you can play your own game. On the other hand, a defender who is more shaky and vulnerable, less physically imposing and less commanding, which can all have a psychological bearing on your players, thus contributing to a weaker backline, even for all the leaders there. Yes, players need to step up and are capable of doing so, but it isn't necessarily that easy. Is this too tall of a mountain to climb for Carlton in the opening weeks? Let's take a look at some footage. With Carlton's tall defender brigade looking a little bit less formidable and roles changing, it's going to be interesting to see where the coaching staff opt to allocate key defenders at contests, higher up or deeper on the ground. Lewis Young, as a defender that may not hold his own as well, could ask the question of needing extra numbers aerially to help him out, which simultaneously may take away from others' roles. So much discussion. It's going to be interesting to see what Carlton opt to do with opposition key forwards that move up the ground. Will they look to keep Lewis Young and these taller intercepting types deeper, like a McGovern, and allow these opposition key forwards to roam. The Blues like to commit numbers higher up the ground to lock it in their forward half. On this occasion, this may be experimental. They've let De Koning take Cameron here and it's an awfully easy exit. However, they've got McGovern now picking up the Cats' ruck, which is Conway. I think for rucks who are less seasoned, 
I think they'll be happy to give this territory away. They're still a little bit imbalanced, the Cats, because Hawkins is about a kick and a half away. If there's a clearer path to goal, say a Hawkins here, a Henry here, it may be a different story. And of course, the kick was also rubbish, which doesn't really help Geelong at all, but you do like the placement by McGovern as he reads the kick well. This could serve as a problem when you have McGovern outside the 50 having to hold his direct to match up accountable and it gets through. Young and Kemp are much deeper who don't have a convincing crack at this marking contest. The inability to get a mark and being fairly outpositioned means the structure's completely gone and that's an awful lot of space for George Hewitt to cover even if ultimately the final result was him getting hit up on the chest. Similarly, this shows the sort of marking contest we may get accustomed to when slow play occurs. It may be a ploy with McGovern playing taller for his direct matchup to not engage in the aerial contest and remove that threat, leaving Young and Kemp the two going up, which doesn't look as formidable for oppositions to deal with. Kempy and McGovern are both up at this contest with TDK. The numbers are back, so it's going to be interesting to see whether we interchange smaller players sitting behind with one key defender like this occasion, or have multiple taller defenders sitting deeper. Where do you want the pacey halfbacks that are good disposers of the football? And where do you want more reinforcement? This leads me to the concern I have with Lewis Young and why I'm of the belief he's going to require more help. For a player as slender as he is in comparison to Weeders with less of a solid base, he can get easily imbalanced or pushed around and his positioning slash reading of the game sets a foundation for him being on the back foot before the ball even reaches his contest. Kemp here, McGovern here. I don't have a huge issue with them all being in the general vicinity, but the problem I do have is Lewis Young getting nudged around like it's a boy versus a man. And that subtle nudge by danger allows Henry to simultaneously adopt that space as his own and also block McGovern's run as a leaper. Simply having a presence like Wheaters in place here, I think does a world of difference for the psychology of our defenders, because you know Wheaters will throw himself in harm's way. For the dynamics we've got here, with Kempe, McGovern and Lewis Young, I definitely don't want to see free kicks being given away, especially when we've got all our resources present at this one contest. But still, that uncertainty without weeders may seep in. McGovern also having to play taller, I think poses as an issue in itself. You don't have his instincts available to you because he's preoccupied needing to play taller in a more lockdown sort of role. Here, Lewis Young gets caught under the footy again, too busy contemplating where it's headed rather than proactively moving to get in the position that'll help. I do like this sort of dynamic on slower moving possessions where you've got Young more stationary, McGovern moving in from the side, and then Kempe is close by as well. One other thing to mention with a weakened defense is now that added attention to ensuring you limit turnover and apply enough pressure up the ground to prevent transition. This is all because we like to commit mass resources to the wing, yet if it gets over the back, the protective layer has been bypassed, leaving players like Lewis Young, who are deeper lying, to be exposed. You'll see here where Kempe is in the right place, and this is his role he likes to play, working similar to that of a halfback flanker and use that kicking disposal to slingshot it the other way. However, he's got a bit of an increased responsibility with the back line we were playing here. He has to act like he's a bit taller because he's playing on key forwards, not third talls or medium sized forwards, which obviously are more peripheral pieces to a forward line, not a focal point. And we did love a good loopy handball or kick over the top of a defender, which I got told playing juniors to never do. Look for the way round, not over the top. Because Kempi's thrown it away, our balance, which had committed to winning a possession, is completely thrown off. And Cameron, who was Kemp's man at the start of the play, isn't held by any form of resistance. That means with the ground he can gain, Geelong can cook over the back. And for whatever strength the Blues may have one-on-one -on -one with the players they've got back there, they can preempt where the ball is going, but only to a certain extent. They can't preempt where the player is going. And that high defensive line means you just let the wind take this ball. And it's a perfectly weighted kick where Stengel doesn't need to break stride. You'll see here the Cats are able to shove the Blues aside essentially. Every roll up by the Blues is met by brilliance or fortune. Cameron's no look hand pass means the play continues. Cowan needs to roll over, which is where McGovern also rolls over, and the Blues get what they want in terms of sheltering Geelong away from the corridor. But McGovern and Kemp up the ground means you'll have these sort of situations should that impact by Govan Kemp not be felt. Lewis Young, the only recognized defender deep 
15 meters out from goal. Now, I don't know what that sounds like to you, but I cringe having to say that sentence. And Blake Akers, who got sucked into all of this, gets used as a step ladder. This really stresses the importance of Carlton disabling fastball movement in order to achieve success. When the turnover occurs here, the game's opened up 20 or so minutes into the last in such heat, but it sort of replicates a transition play. Kemp's here and it's gone over his head. Lewis Young is in the forward line by himself and you can see the priority of the Blues. Their running backs are higher up, even for the outnumber that may be over the back. That's the fearlessness they play with. Even still, this kick isn't far enough to reach the outnumber. Now, if you're a Weetering, you're most likely smashing this over the line playing your percentages or outmarking Henry with a fair amount of size over him. Instead, Lewis Young doesn't even meet the ball, and whilst Danger is a bit of a rat for milking this free, Lewis Young doesn't get low enough, and as a defender, you should have no business giving freeze away in these positions where the boundary line is so close. You can see this is great stuff for Geelong because Carlton are wanting a re-entry, and Geelong would know that if they can apply themselves well enough here, there is a definite opportunity for a quick transition because of that high defensive line we keep talking about. Hunters is trying to get it to those extra players sitting on the back of the stoppage, which is why Brad Close's tackle is so valuable. You can see all those Blues numbers so crucial to the structure being bypassed, leaving Lewis Young well exposed. And look, the Cats have absolutely screwed this up. But say a Charlie Cameron is running onto this in opening round, fair to say having Lewis Young here is only gonna result in one thing an old-fashioned spit roasting. And this concept happened in the prelim last year um, against Brisbane as well. There's so many examples which shed light on the situation that I haven't shown. And yes, it is pre-season, but turnovers are a common part of the game irrespective of the time of year. So you've got to limit how many of those you're doing and you've got to make sure you do those in a position that don't leave you too vulnerable. But this isn't just limited to fast ball movement. It's going to be key that the Blues win at the stoppage and those contests on the wing to prevent those deep entries for oppositions to try test players like Lewis Young, who may be deeper lying. I did like how the Blues and Cats replaced center bounces with boundary throw-ins because I really think that subtly, this is the exact match practice we need. The Cats loved a good forward handball and the Blues loved to commit a lot of numbers to the contest. The Blues can't maximize numbers at the contest and the Cats are going to love a good forward handball. The Cats never use a kick. Instead, they manipulate the handball game to suck in those key defenders for us. And they run it an extra 30 meters to basically have a shot you would get in training. If you can bring forward enough Blues players out of the back 50 to press the ball carrier, then out the back, not only will there be space, but there will be players. Simple enough to understand. You see with all the broken tackles, and Geelong's handball game, yet again, Carlton's best taller defender is not playing like a tall defender because he has to roll over to close this link up down. This is a cracking kick by Cameron, but Lewis Young probably shouldn't be this far off danger. This is one of my main concerns, I think, and why I keep banging on about pressure up the ground. If plays like McGovern are sucked out of the back line because the midfield pressure isn't adequate, then it's gonna open up great chances for oppositions deeper with our representation not as strong. Here's another good reason for winning these contests. If you don't prevail, oppositions can swing the play to the opposite side and then dynamically send the ball the other way as the Carlton defense have all shifted from where they began. Keep the defense predicting and speculating, not knowing. All the numbers are flung over to the fat side, which has created this line of Blues defenders not investing their resources into filling this space on this side. This is going to be another easier form of breach you would imagine oppositions may look to exploit. So you see that the common trend is that the majority of the work is going to need to be done up the ground. So Carlton's last line of defense is protected, a line in which Lewis Young may very well be involved in. I think losing the surety that comes with the play of Jacob Wiedering raises a lot of uncertainty and that's what this screams. I think this has a knock-on effect to Carlton's halfback line as well. This is Ed Kerno's insight on what to expect from Carlton's halfback line this season. This is the improvement area for Carlton, I think, off the halfback line. They'll be looking to generate some really good speed and get it to those dangerous forwards as quickly as possible. And I definitely could see some method in their play. Very direct 
both with forward hand passes and straight line runs. We see the freedom of these halfback flankers when possession is clearly in Carlton's hands and that pressure is taken off them. Though not having a player like Wheaters who can take intercept marks at such a high volume is so negatively impactful because you don't have the springboard to rebound it out of the back 50 as quickly. A mark can be met with a quick handball receive or a kick wide. You can use the space, you can get extra support runners to continue the chain. A player like Lewis Young, who isn't as physically able as your defensive anchor, means that A, the ball hits the ground, and B, when it does, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get possession and move it for the contested nature of it all. The hierarchy sort of changes without Wheaters because you don't have that key defender to block or even communicate. Instead, you've got Lewis Young who is quite removed from this play, not really doing either of the things that I just said. This communication is so valuable for simple nuancy details as letting Brody Kemp know that he's got a little bit more time and he doesn't have to rush it as quickly as he did to get that handball out. Myers does that exact kick, which is going to be where you can kill the Blues, especially without Weetering in the team, who cancels out so many of these ground level opportunities for oppositions simply by being able to intercept and preventing those scrimmages altogether, or by having a more commanding presence even without a mark. Ultimately, for all the scenarios that could involve Jacob Weetering missing time, this may be the best scenario. Multiple games have presented multiple opportunities for chemistry to build and the coaching staff to find a workaround or stopgap solution to put forth against some strong opponents. And some of that solution may well reside higher up the ground where mids and forwards are more responsible. I'm more on the side of concern with the analysis I've displayed today, but there is no doubt that there has been and potentially will be capable personnel that could fill the void. What do you think? Will the Wheaters' absence present a challenge that is more than we bargained for? Or will the Blues look barely shaken by the injury and they'll look very, very controlled in nature? Time will tell and this Blues analysis will continue as we look to find the answer. I'll be back next week and for the entire AFL season to critically pick apart Carlton's game. So stick around, like and subscribe if you are new to see more of these shenanigans. Until then, stay safe. Talk to you soon. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.